Sutra. What is the manifestation of karma? Ananda, such people as this, who are pure and who uphold the prohibitive precepts, do not have thoughts of greed and lust, and so they do not become dissipated in the pursuit of the six external defining sense objects. Commentary We first discussed the causes that aid in the creation of karma. Next, we talked about rectifying the nature of the karmic consciousness which creates offenses. Now the discussion turns to the manifestation of karma. What is the manifestation of karma? It is the karma created in this very life. We must counteract it, oppose it. We should not allow ourselves to succumb to the creation of new karma. We should return. We should turn back from it. Ananda, such people as these, who are pure and who uphold the prohibitive precepts, do not have thoughts of greed and lust. This refers to the people we have been discussing, who at this stage are pure and keep the, the precepts. These people are not greedy for the false and illusory bliss of sexual desire, and so they do not become dissipated in the pursuit of the six external defiling sense objects. They are not turned by the experience of the six sense objects of forms, sounds, smells, tastes, touchables, and dramas. They return the light and come back home. Sutra, because they do not pursue them, they turn around to their own source. Without the conditions of the defiling objects, there is nothing for the sense organs to match themselves with, and so they reverse their flow, become one unit, and no longer function in six ways. Commentary Because they do not pursue them, they turn around to their own source. They are not turned by the six sense objects, and so they go back to the origin. They return the light and illumine within and turn back their hearing to hear their self-nature. They cultivate the perfect penetration of the ear. Without the conditions of the defiling objects, there is nothing for the sense organs to match themselves with. They no longer have any connect connection with the six sense objects. The relationship between them is severed by people stop pursuing them. And so the sense organs no longer are matched with the sense objects and so they reverse their flow. That refers to the cultivation of the perfect penetration of the ear, whereby one enters the flow and forgets the place of entry. They become one unit. The six organs are interpenetrated and function together. They no longer function in six ways. The six sense organs no longer are dissipated in their pursuit of the experiences of the six sense objects. Sutra, all the lands of the ten directions are as brilliantly clear and pure as more light reflected in crystal. Commentary at that time, all the lands of the ten directions are as brilliantly clear and pure as more light reflected in crystal. In other words, they are transparently clear and visible to all. Sutra, their bodies and minds are blissful as they experience the equality of wonderful perfection and they attain great peace. Commentary, when the crystal captures the light of the full, full moon, there is both brilliance and transparency. It can be completely seen through. This analogy represents the state of cultivators who have reached the level where both their bodies and minds are pure. At that point, their bodies and minds are blissful as they experience the, the equality of wonderful per perfection and they attain great peace. This sense of peace is something one experiences oneself, not something that is evident to others. Sutra, the secret perfection and pure wonder of all the first commands appear before them. Commentary, the secret perfection and pure wonder of all the first commands refers to the Buddha's pure Dharma nature. At this point, they appear before them. 
a cultivator such as this can experience this state. Sutra, these people then obtain patience with the non-production of dharmas. They thereupon gradually cultivate according to their practices until they reside securely in the sagely positions. Commentary, these people then obtain patience with the non-production of dharmas. What is meant by patience with the non-production of dharmas? One does not see the slightest dharma arise, nor the slightest dharma extinguished. Dharmas are neither produced nor destroyed, but it is not easy to obtain this state. They thereupon gradually cultivate according to their practices, until they reside securely in the stately positions. From the point of attaining patience with the non-production of dharmas, they gradually progress in their practice as they go through the sagely positions without being shaken or moved. So try this is a third of the gradual stages of cultivation. Commentary This is a third of the gradual stages of cultivation, that of preventing the manifestation of karma.